Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Revelation chapter 2. Uh, we're going to do verse 18. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I was going to do a video on the possibly and probably, I was getting them all mixed up there, the first miracle of Jesus, of the turning of the water into wine at the wedding in Cana, and why that is significant. You know, there's a lot of symbolism there when you think about it. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, if you look ahead, you can visualize this was possibly an earthly representation of the marriage supper of the Lamb that's going to come one day. You know, water is the flesh and the wine. Well, that was, didn't Jesus take wine at the Last Supper and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many? Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of symbolism there. And I'll cover it, Lord willing, next study. But before I did that, I thought, you know, let's go back to basics. Why was marriage even created? You know, and finding a good wife is, for a guy anyways, is uh, pretty important. There was a guy down here, uh, he was kind of a shady, some people, uh, I shouldn't say he was, I, I should say some consider that he was a shady character. He was allegedly a shady character to some. And he married a girl that was a stripper, I think. I might have my facts mixed up. I'm not even going to say her name. But he lives a couple, he lived a couple miles from me. And uh, she decided she wanted his stuff. So she hired a Boynton Beach police officer posing as a hitman to kill him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out too good for her. And uh, I think they made a movie out of it or TV special or something. But uh, yeah, a couple miles from where I live. Well, that was his first mistake, marrying a stripper. You know, a uh, girl takes her clothes off from, uh, for, you know, to get money. Uh, matter of fact, my first real girlfriend, uh, I almost married her too in high school, but uh, I'm glad she talked me out of it. She thought my family was rich because dad worked over uh, a job and the county was depressed because the uh, Cape had closed, Cape Kennedy. We were up in Brevard County. So he bought a house on the island. I think it was like $30,000. That house is probably worth three quarters of a million now but uh yeah i'm glad we didn't get married because she got divorced uh two or three times and i guess i would have been her first divorce so uh yeah but uh she became a stripper but uh i'm pretty sure she didn't take any guys home because she didn't yeah she didn't have a very high opinion of guys I hope that I was not, uh, I was not a very good role model for the male, if you know what I mean. So I hope I didn't ruin her, uh, what, uh, beliefs or whatever in, in males. But, uh, yeah, I was like, 
laughing when I heard she became a stripper. I was like, oh boy. But uh, yeah, I got to meet her at some kind of reunion we had. And uh, she was bragging about how she'd strip on, I don't know, Friday, Saturday nights. And she paid off her house. She'd make hundreds of dollars. And she paid off her house really early. And she telling me how stupid guys are. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. 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 Trying to impress a girl like that by uh, sticking money down uh, her clothes. Well, what little clothes that she might have had on. I don't know. Thank you, Lord, for not letting us get married. That's all I can say. But, uh, yeah. But having a good wife for a guy, very important. Because, you know, you don't want them running around on you. And you don't want them to try to kill you. To steal your stuff. So, very important. And girls, let me tell you something. When you marry a guy, you should uh, you should both be able to trust each other with your lives. It's just very important. I mean, you know, a lot of people just get married because, you know, you know, the first person that wants to have sex with them or whatever, you know, it's that's not a good reason to get married. Never mind what the Bible says about that. Bible makes marriage a very sacred thing, really. I mean, you know, starting a family. I mean, just look at Adam and Eve. But before we go into the good reasons why the Lord created marriage and what have you, I want to take a look at the bad side, you know. It's like a, a lawyer. Well, on the one hand, this and this and this. But on the other hand, you know, and you've always heard people say, hey, uh, I got some news for you. I got good news and I got bad news. What do you want to hear first? Well, I'm one of those people says, tell me the bad news first. Well, that's what I'm going to hit you with, the bad news. Let's take a look at the bad news. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 18 We're going to take a look at Jezebel. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. You know, when I first read uh, about Christ's eyes as a flame of fire, I was always thinking, well, maybe he was like an albino, you know, red eyes. Like, you know, I've seen out rabbits with albinos with red eyes. And then somebody pointed out to me and says, no, 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 Bob, you got to, you got to, you know, it could possibly be, but there's another explanation. I was like, yeah, what is it? So he took me over, turned on his gas stove, and the flame is going. He says, what color is the flame? Blue. Ah. So, you know, think about it. Blue flame. You know, gas stove, right? So it's very possible Christ had blue eyes. Very, very possible, right? And his feet are like fine brass. Now, you may not know it, but in the Bible, blue is uh, associated with the law. So, what do you do with your eyes? You see, right? At least most people. So, Christ having blue eyes would uh, eh, go along with that, wouldn't it? So, all right, shut up, Bob, you're rambling. Verse 19, I know thy works of the church of Thyatira, right? I know thy works and charity. Charity is always good, right? And service and faith 
and thy patience. Boy, that's something I need to work on, patience. Lord, give me patience, and I want it now. Yeah. And thy patience, and thy works. And the last, to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. You guys are doing pretty good, but yeah, you could use some work in a couple of areas here. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest, or allow, that woman Jezebel. Oh, Jezebel. Hmm. Well, this is not the Jezebel from the Old Testament, because she's been dead, and she got uh, devoured by dogs, four-legged dogs with a tail. Uh, they, they likely got a good meal out of the deal. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. Ooh, she calls herself. Not the Lord. The Lord doesn't call her that. She calls herself a prophetess. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Hmm. So what kind of fornication is this? Is it physical or spiritual? You know, if you do a study on witches and Satanists, sex plays a major part. You know, the Bible says one man and one woman, and he wants them to be virgins. You know, how many guys are virgins on their wedding night? <laughs> How many girls for that matter? You know. And uh, of course, there's always a double standard. The guy's been with a lot of girls. Oh, he's a stud, you know. And they wear that like a badge of honor. But if a girl has a bunch of guys, well, oh, she's a, you know, a whore. But uh, Satanists. Sex always has its place because Satan wants to defile anything that the Lord means for good. Always. So, is she committing physical fornication to defile the servants of God? Probably. I read... Uh, well, when I was studying the occult, you know, I mean, I was reading the heavy-duty stuff, not to practice it, but so that I would recognize it. The witches uh, encouraged their people when there was a strong church, and then they would pray their little, cast their little spells against it, and if their spells weren't working... They would tell them, oh, go join, you know, go go attend the church. Uh, get one of their best looking girls. And do their best to seduce the pastor. You know, have him come over, uh, tell him, oh, I got problems. Can you help me, uh, pastor? And then, uh, you know, have him get in the bed. Destroy his ministry that way. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe get it on videotape. Put it on YouTube. Hey, why not, you know? And they actually encouraged their witches to do this. Of course, they, you know, they wanted to get the best looking one. So the guy would uh, be, you know, tempted. That's why a lot of churches have an unwritten rule. They will not hire an unmarried pastor. Absolutely will not do it. It's just an unwritten rule. But it's true nonetheless. And yeah, I took a Bible college class on uh, church administration. 
And it makes sense. So physical fornication and spiritual fornication, probably both. And to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I wonder if that applies to uh, foods with the kosher uh, seal of approval where the rabbi comes in and uh, says a prayer over the food. You know, if you see a K with a circle or a U with a circle, uh, it's been, quote, blessed, unquote, by the rabbi. I don't know if that applies in this particular uh, thing, but, you know. But we're not talking about something that was secretly done. We're talking about something that was openly done, where these people would know that this food was dedicated to an idol, to Satanism. You know, I've had people say, oh, you know, there was somebody I knew uh, told me their young daughter was having uh, nightmares and stuff and said there was monsters living in the closet and under the bed. I said, oh, okay. You know what you need to do? Go through the house. And anything that you even suspect of being occult related, get rid of it. And they did it, and guess what? No problem anymore. The child doesn't have monsters in the closet anymore. You know, young children are sometimes more spiritually attuned than we are. And, you know. But items dedicated to the devil, you don't want them in the house. Get rid of them. Uh, let's see. Remember, I don't know, uh, there was a vampire movie. And uh, they have a thing about uh, vampires can only come in your house if you invite them. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's a movie, but there's a ring of truth to it. So the vampire, you know, it's night and he's calling on the, the woman and he knocks on the door and she opens the door and he says, oh, hello, whatever, Melissa or whatever her name is, you know, may I come in? Oh, absolutely. Come on in, uh, Count Dracula, you know. And uh, yeah, when you give them permission to enter, well, you got a problem. To teach and to seduce my spirits to commit uh, servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I, the Lord, gave her, Jezebel, space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Now, wait a minute here. Here it is. She's, it's called fornication twice. Verse 20, seduce my servants to commit fornication. And then 21, I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Fornication is sex between unmarried people. But here in verse 22, he says she it's committing adultery. Why? Because the church is married to the Lord. Yeah. So in this aspect, they're committing adultery. So maybe it's a spiritual and a physical carnal fornication or adultery or, yeah. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Yeah, I know I mentioned it before, and I'll say it again. There's churches now that teach that repenting doesn't mean to change your deeds or your actions or the things you do. It doesn't mean to repent of sin. 
But here, the Lord's telling them to repent of their deeds. A believing church being told to repent of their deeds, what they're doing. You know, it doesn't mean to just change your mind from unbelief to belief, because this is a believing church. Thank you, Mr. Anderson from Tempe, Arizona, for telling me how you really feel. Verse 23. And I will kill her children with death. Boy, that's some strong language there. And all the churches shall know that I am he which search, searcheth the reins and hearts. Boy, that's scary. I know my heart is not right with Lord a lot. Ugh. I am he that searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Do you know your position in the kingdom is going to be judged according to your works? You know? Really, think about it. It's true. It's not based on when you get in. But there's going to be, you know, you might get in and be the floor sweeper, whereas somebody else that had a lot of fruit, a lot of good works, did charity work, uh, helped everybody, um, they might be the, who knows, you know, a ruler over five cities. So, matter of fact, let's take a look at that. Let's read a portion of Hebrews 11. I've, I'm positive I've done a Bible study on Hebrews 11. Uh, it's very important. Uh, you could never get pre-trib rapture people to ever consider this. They just, no, that's not for us. That's for the Jews. That's not for us. After all, they're Hebrews and we're not. We're just Gentiles saved by grace. Never mind that the word Gentile just means nations. Sometimes heathen, sometimes Israel. Hebrews 11, verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. What was the king's commandment? All the male children should be killed. That's in the book of Exodus. Um, Egypt, the Pharaoh. He wanted all the male Israelites to be executed. Well, drowned. Throw them in the river. It's kind of hard to for a newborn child to swim, you know? Verse 24. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You better believe Moses could have had probably three or four wives uh with the Egyptians, you know, he was uh, the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter. I mean, you know, verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he, re he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. See, Moses was looking for Christ even back then. And people just, you know, think the you-know-whos that reject Christ are uh, affiliated with Moses. And I don't think so. Verse 27, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses could see the Lord even though the Lord was invisible. 
Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. People, look up the Scottish Declaration of Independence. The Scots knew that they passed through the Red Sea with Moses. They knew this. And who gave us the King James Bible? James was the King of Scotland. Yeah, King James was the King of Scotland and England. He gave us the King James Bible, which many revivals have come from. You ever seen a revival using the NIV? I haven't, and you never will. Because in the original 1984 edition of the NIV, you couldn't even prove to somebody that uh, sodomy was wrong. Because you have to show somebody two clear verses for something to be established. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. Well, guess what? You couldn't do it. Every time the word sodomite appears, they changed it with shrine prostitute. Uh, what's a shrine? You know, it's kind of like a satanic place. And then, you know, prostitute. So is it okay to do it at the shrine as long as you don't charge? Or is it okay to charge as long as it's not at the shrine? And is a shrine prostitute male or female? You know, sodomite is, is plain language, peer, you know, period. I mean, it's, it's, you know what it is. But not only that, the NIV removed the word Lucifer in Isaiah 14 and inserted a name for Jesus, thus making Jesus the one who fell from heaven that's going to the pit of hell. Oh boy, they must laugh over that. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Look at those stupid idiots buying our NIV Bible. The exclusive print rights for the NIV is by the company that's owned by the company that sells the Satanic Bible from the Church of Satan. And people trust the NIV. Number one bestseller at least one or two years in a row. Yeah. What does that tell you? you ever seen a revival with the NIV? And you never will. Yep, people. The Scots knew they passed through the Red Sea with Moses. They knew they were Israel. They knew that. And a king of Israel printed the King James Bible, which has power. There's power in the name of Jesus. I don't see any power in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Especially when you got the Antichrist spouting that name. I don't believe it. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson. Samson. Samson's in the hall of faith here. Samson committed suicide. Right? You know, you hear the Vatican, oh, suicide's the unpardonable sin. Eh, I don't know. Samson's in the Hall of Fame, Hall of Faith, Hall of Fame, the Faith Hall of Fame. There you go. He committed suicide, and the Lord gave him strength to do it. And of Samson, and of Jephthah, 
of David also, and of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Oh, if only we had that today. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. What? That they might obtain a better resurrection. So there's a resurrection, and then there's a better resurrection. What does that mean? Uh, maybe they get wings? Some people have to walk, and others have wings to fly? You know, Red Bull? I don't know. What does it mean, a better resurrection? Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel, cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. No, they weren't smoking Afghani hash or Colombian gold. No. No, they were stoned. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute. What does destitute mean? It means having nothing but the clothes on your back and what you can carry. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, and in dens, and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, not yet anyways. Verse 40, God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. In the flesh, not perfect. But one day there's going to be a resurrection some are going to have a good resurrection. Others are going to have a better resurrection. And don't ask, because I don't know. Verse 23. Revelation, 20, uh, Revelation 2, 23. And I will kill her children, Jezebel, with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give every one of you, I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest, and Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, unto the end, not the pre-trib rapture, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches." What is the morning star that is going to be given to him? Revelation 22. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, and the bright morning star. Christ is the morning star. What does the NIV do? 
They remove the word Lucifer and insert the word Morning Star, thus making Christ into Lucifer. Oh, Chaplain Bob, Lucifer is a Latin word. It doesn't belong in the Bible. Uh, well, taco is Spanish, so maybe you should quit saying the word taco because it's not English, right? Enchilada, you know? And hey, by the way, 20, at least 20% of English is from Latin, at least 20%. That's why people took Latin in college back 60, 70 years ago. In the 40s and the 50s, if you went to the university, you learned Greek and Latin, probably a semester of each. And they had to remove that because the uh, equal opportunity crowd just couldn't handle it. You know, I guess it was Ray, Ray, Sist. You know? Yeah. All right. So, Jezebel. Bad, bad, bad news, huh? Uh, we just read the, uh, the New Testament. W why did this woman pick that name? Why? Why did this woman that's committing fornication and... Teaching the people to, you know, a self-proclaimed prophetess and to eat things sacrificed to idols, things offered to the devils. Why? Well, you know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, says, you, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils doesn't work that way pick one or the other pick one all right so where is the first place the first time jezebel appears in the bible because when you look at something the first time something appears in the bible usually in the context gives you an idea of what it has what pertain what it pertains to whether it be good or bad and how it applies to the rest of the bible you know so that's why paul had changed his name from saul because saul uh was not associated with being a good thing uh, Saul was a Benjamite, the king, King Saul, before David. And uh, Saul, when he met the Lord on the road to the Damascus, Christ, he was also of the tribe of Benjamin. So Saul was a, uh, you know, that was kind of like their claim to fame. But he says, no, nah, I don't want to be known as Saul anymore. So he changed his name to Paul, or all or maybe the Lord changed his name. I'll have to look into that. I don't want to give bad information. All right, so let's take a look at Jezebel. Now, we know, saw that in Revelation. Uh, she was doing things didn't please the Lord. Lord gave her space to repent. She didn't. Seems like very few do. So let's look at 1 Kings chapter 16. And verse 29. And in the thirtieth and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. So here it is. You've got a king of Israel and a king of Judah. You know? Eh. But they're all the same, according to the demon nominational pastors, so... And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. That's not exactly, that's not something I would want read 
when I'm facing the Lord and, you know, I, I, I would hope that would never pertain to me. I would hope. Verse 31, And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the sons of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Zidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Now, I know I've mentioned it before, but Baal is just a generic term that means Lord. And basically, they're calling Satan Lord. And Jezebel is just an alternate spelling. Uh, B-E-L is just an alternate spelling of Baal. So it could be Jezebel. Jezebel, the daughter of Eph Baal, king of the Zidonians, which were Canaanites, and went and served Baal and worshipped them. This guy's name, the king, is... His name is, you know, F. Ball. F. Satan Worshipper. I mean, he even has Satan Worshipper in his name, if you ask me. So Jezebel, Jezebel has another, has Satanism in her name. Her father, the king, has Satanism in his name. And he was a Canaanite, king of the Zidonians. And then Ahab not only took a Canaanite woman to wife, but then he went and served Baal and worshipped him. And he, verse 32, and he raised and he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove. Yeah, because all the witches do their little satanic sacrifices among the trees. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of, Ang to, of Israel to anger. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Wow. Uh, how's that for a... Uh, You know, you really want that read when you go, uh, when the books are life and, and the other books are opened? And, and, ugh, no thank you. Guy was bad news. Not only was Ahab bad, but his wife, she was even worse. And we're going to find that out soon. All right, I think I'm going to make this a uh, part one. And uh, because if you're really interested in what I'm going to be covering, the Elijah video I did is an hour and 40 minutes long. It covers a lot of the same area, but... Instead of focusing on Elijah, now we're going to focus on, on this part. We're going to focus on Jezebel. I mean, Ahab was bad, but Jezebel was worse. Absolutely worse. So, yeah. So, I'm going to make this a part one. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain, from the foundation of the world, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.